Howdy YouTube, Tempted Auto, this is Paul. Welcome back. Today's video is one that I didn't really want to make, but I kinda had to make. Um, you'll see as we get going why. Little disclaimer, an animal was harmed in the making of this video. If you don't wanna see that, you might wanna move ahead like, I don't know, a minute and a half, two minutes. I'll give you a second. Okay, I'm assuming if you're still here, then you want to see it. So, roll film. Oh wait, that's up to me, hold on. Yep, totaled. Total loss. This is my little buggy. Look at what happened. So that deer just completely wrecked it. And the insurance adjuster just told me that uh, it's done for. It's totaled. So what do we do next for my commuter? I got a 104 mile a day commute to Pittsburgh. And um, this was the rig that did it. So why don't you stick around? Let's see what we come up with for plan B. So I started looking for a new daily driver to run back and forth to work. My drive is pretty long, so I was looking for something very practical. Reliable, economical, Soulless, boring car. And this went on for a few days. Shopping for boring cars is boring. Indeed it was. Finally, after several days, I had an epiphany. What if my boring car doesn't have to be a boring car? Okay, and that decision has led to this road trip. We are now in West Virginia wife and I and we're heading to look at what's not going to be a project hopefully but something I can just do a couple little maintenance things to it and put it on the road so when we go find it I will bring you uh, back and we'll take a look okay this should be the part of the uh, video where you see all kinds of really cool footage of the car in the barn <laughs> I uh, messed that all up with the GoPro so instead, enjoy this little uh, video clip montage from my camera. Yeah, that's the best I can do for you.
Man, here it is. Locked in a barn for 25 years. Yeah, the tires are actually coming up. I mean, in 1967, this would have made perfect sense to commute back and forth to Pittsburgh in. 67 Chevy 2, Chevy Nova, 40, oh, look at this thing, 48,000 original miles, so the owner says, I don't know, that steering wheel might have 148,000, but, huh, not too bad. Let's get to a car wash and see what we actually bought. Okay, so now that it's home, let's take a better look at it. I've already looked it over a little bit. And it's not the cream puff that it was sold to me as. This is clearly a repaint uh, from a while ago. And you can, you can see the not so great body work underneath it. If you look here, you can see that the paint is on top of the, uh, the weather stripping, which is not a good sign. But I don't feel, like up through here, I don't feel any patches. This all feels normal and good to me, the metal underneath. You can see it's coming through here. And if you look carefully, you can see that it's it's coming through bodywork that's already done. Like this is putty here. Um, you can see very much a bad sanding job underneath this. Uh, some more paint on the seal. If you look down the side, you can see that that back door is caved in. The other side's even worse, I'll get there. But if you look, you can see it used to have body molding on it. And it's been removed and puttied in. So, see, there's rust coming through, but you can you can see poor body work. I don't know if it's coming up on the camera or not, but like some obvious putty through here. Um, if you look in the back, there's a big rust hole. This has been kind of played with a little bit. Uh, there's a rust hole here. I, I got my finger in something. So, uh, yeah, this the rust hole there. This has been kind of clanked out funny. So, but it's not, I don't feel any running my hands on through here. I mean, I, it doesn't feel terrible, terrible. Um, but it's been, been boogered. Back here, you can see some terrible body work. This is putty. Um, I don't know if it's rust or a dent. This gas tank sounds like it's full of dirt. Um, I don't think it is. I think the gas has just been in it for so long that it's kind of congealed. Yeah, you can see some putty. <laughs> oh, let's see if I can get you into it. 
there's some body filler but all in all like this is decent the other side i believe looks the same way it's all all good so i mean the car's not terrible i'm not I'm not upset at all um like i said it's not the cream puff that he built it out to be but it's not terrible either this side looks all right if you look down it though you can see the passenger door is all caved in passenger rear door this is clearly putty this whole door is putty um this looks like some putty back here as well feeling up through here though i don't i don't feel anything horribly ugly that's a seam yeah that's all right this side is not too bad uh, down low the door scrapes right here when you open it I have to do a little bit of adjusting you can see these panels like now granted this is a 67 uh, GM didn't do a very good job from the factory even but I would say this door is off a bit uh, this feels really good through here like, I don't feel any rust whatsoever a little bit mud but no rust if you look here though you can see that the floor pans are pretty much gone and these screws tell me that there's a cheapo patch behind it um up through here though i don't see anything scary rust hole here that's where the battery sits that's kind of typical i'll uh i'll put a patch on that so you can kind of see i don't know if the camera's picking up on this at all you can kind of see like sand marks or or something all down through the side of this i actually picked up some uh sweet patina we're going to try to bring the body out as best as we can but it's probably just going to show a whole bunch of ugliness oh i see rust back window that i might actually have to deal with um, but again, I'm, I'm not I'm not upset at all. I did pick up a gas tank already. I picked up actually quite a bit of pieces and parts. The interior though is just really pretty. I was looking for a build sheet. It's already gone. Um, but that's uh, and these doors close really really well. Here's the front. Look at this seat. I mean, it's it's pretty nice. It even has a headliner in good shape. A little stained, but that's okay. Nothing, nothing in the glove box. The radio. Let me run around to the other side, and we'll get you into the driver's side. Driver's side. I mean, not bad. You know, I'm not I'm not upset. I don't see anything really bothers me too bad um i have new weather seal we'll, we'll get that changed out here's the dash i believe that's original miles and i'm saying that because the old title um actually listed it as as uh, true mileage and the last owner only put like 300 miles on this car so almost 49,000 miles look at the brake pedal um like like no wear at all same with the gas pedal very little wear carpet now i guess this could be aftermarket carpet because we know that there's patch panels under it so it has been out before um the wiring appears to be unchewed well that seems like a strange way to route that how do you get those fuses out is that is that factory that can't be factory what am I looking at here? Is that emergency brake cable? No. What would this be? Might have to do some investigating. Oh, that could be emergency brake cable. Oh. Let's see what I'm looking at here. That goes... I'll pull over that way. I don't know what this is. 
but it seems odd that it'd be right in front of the fuses, but I guess you never know. Something to investigate. Well, it looks like it's supposed to go where it goes. I don't know, I'm afraid to pull the emergency brake. Yeah, that, that moves, so that's what that is. Not a smoker, well, that's nice. Doesn't even have a cigarette lighter. Now that is weird. I thought everything in the, this era had a cigarette lighter. Uh, dash panel, not bad. I'm not sure what that bolt is laying up there, but that's all right. Uh, We'll have to see what works and what doesn't when we put a battery in it. Uh, so anyways, this is our starting point. I think... I think I'm going to get this gas tank out. Ooh. It does not even smell like gas. So whatever is in that tank is... I, I don't know. But like I said, it, it feels feels like there is something in this tank um, so I'm gonna start with that I'm gonna get this tank out of there that'll give me a better view up top through here um, since it's gonna be a little warmer today than tomorrow I'll probably get that cleaned up and and uh, painted a little uh, sweet patinas blackout underneath here and uh, I don't know then we'll see if we can get it to run we'll use a temporary fuel system got windshield wash fluid in it. That's nice. Okay, well, why don't you come over and look at this too. Here's what we got. A little 194 cubic inch straight six I know it's a 194 because I know that the air cleaner is in the trunk and it still has the sticker on it that says 120 horsepower 194 cubic inch that tells me it's had a bad fuel system for a long time uh, but this is a uh, shock towers look really good everything structurally looks a-okay Battery tray rotted. We saw that hole from the other side. I don't care about that. Oh, um, I smell gasoline. Well, that one's liquidy at least. What do we got? We got three. No. What is that? Okay, this must be the line back to the tank. And it's hard as a rock. We will blow that out. Probably replace all the rubber, check the metal. What else do we got here? I got a broken wire. Nope. We don't have a broken wire. So the yellow wire, do we only have one on here? What else do we got? Well, that goes down. Okay, so that goes to the distributor. This is our fire wire. We'll have to test that for 12 volts. I smell gas strong. They must have tried putting gas in this to get her going. And the carburetor does carburetor things. We'll see what it does, see if it needs a rebuild or not. Um, I actually did not buy a rebuild kit for this, so I'm hoping. Manual steering, manual brakes, drums all the way around. The pedal goes right to the floor. Um, I do have a new master cylinder. I have new wheel cylinders That's and new rubber hoses, but those are all the brake components I bought. Look at this hood. It's got a little bit of surfacey stuff. 
but there's like it's like perfect up behind here i feel no rust at all a little bit of dirt a little bit of dirt and mud i'll have to get that all cleaned out so it doesn't turn to rust you can see this has been painted black when they painted the car um, got a little overspray here so not not the nicest of jobs but this is probably what i'll end up doing too just a just a backyard spray job will be good enough i'm kind of mad that this doesn't match the chevy orange though that bothers me more than anything else that i have not looked in this motor at all what kind of weirdness do we got going on here huh i don't know what i'm up against here i'm gonna have to get a tool i think this just has a regular fill cap battery cable red cable to ground and red cable to positive um, this goes to the temperature sensor everything else is relatively normal uh, it's between the add and the full smells like gasoline That shows full, nice and red. Smells good too. Very good, very nice. The wiring, look at the wiring for this thing though. Man, it looks, it looks completely unshoed. It looks very good. I love how there's like three wires in this whole car. Uh, okay, I'm guessing the windshield wash doesn't work currently. All right. Well, let's uh, let's get a battery in this thing. Well, let's first. It smells like gas, so I'm gonna guess it rotates. That they were trying to do something with it. Yeah, it turns easy. Okay. Spins easy. Uh, let's get a battery in this thing if I can find one, and uh, see what works and what doesn't work. I'm gonna guess that the points distributor uh, is gonna need some attention. We'll throw some gas down it and, and see if it lights off and see what we got. So let me go round up a battery and then we'll be right back. All right, so we got a battery in it. Um, I should check this. What do we got? Nothing. We got nothing at all. All right, let's throw some water in that. Some water just gonna put straight water in it that way when the heater core is bad I'm not putting antifreeze on my carpet um, I just gotta remember to get this out if it's good hopefully I don't find water running out of the block that would be upsetting oh it's empty empty do we have water running we do have water running what's it running out of uh -oh. I got water, I got water dripping from somewhere over here. Hopefully it's a hose. Um. We'll go a little higher and see here I'll put you where you can maybe see it and I will pour again oh you know what it might have been oh it's just the overflow oh thank goodness all right well, so far it's got water in it. Uh, 
Gotta make sure I drain that out though, because I don't want to leave water in this thing, because it's still it's still kind of winter. Oh, view over the other side. The nice thing about these cars is they have really big, uh, big places to put cameras. All right, so let's throw that on. These ends definitely need to be changed. They're terrible. Uh, nothing. Nothing smoking, nothing doing anything weird. That's kind of nice. All right, let's go see if we have anything working inside. Because honestly, I have no idea if this battery's any good or not. Can't tell if anything lit up. Dash lights, oops, as I bang off the stuff. I don't see headlights, but I don't see any lights. I don't see lights. All right. Nothing. Well, maybe a blinker. Got a blinker. Still got the headlight switch on. I got a blinker. No headlights, no running lights, no parking lights. Other blinker. No other blinker. Uh, we do have that one blinking. So, okay. Wipers. That's not trying to do anything. Okay. No horn. Oh. I hear the relay trying. Let's uh let's bump the key. Nothing. Oh, there we go, a little bit. So we either got a starter problem or a battery problem. All right. Oh, maybe got a radio. Fan. No fan. Alright, so we got some wiring to chase down or dirty connector or something. So let's uh guess we'll start with that. Get those battery connectors off of here and cleaned up and Okay, I noticed two things when I was cleaning the grounds up. One <laughs> this thing's gonna run kind of lean. Can you see that? That's the fuel line right there, kinked, almost completely shut. I'm going to remedy that by just cutting out a section of this and putting an inline filter in. That'll get it up a little ways out of the way anyways of the distributor. But number two, I don't see a body ground anywhere on this thing. There's, there's no ground going to the firewall. There's no ground going... Oh, get that back out of the way from this engine to anywhere there's no grounds so I'm gonna add a ground uh, I don't know if I'm gonna run from here to the body or if I'm just gonna run from the end of the uh, the battery cable to the body but I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a piece of wire in for a ground I've cleaned them all up uh, 
that's a fusible link I didn't tear into that connection but I will if I have to let me uh let me throw the ground on here let me get this cleaned up and fixed up and uh, I don't know I guess I guess then we'll move on to spark which we know it doesn't have so uh, let's uh let me finish this up and I'll bring you back okay so temporary ground is hooked up and a fuel filter is hooked up might as well jump right into the points because you know they're going to be garbage let me set you someplace where you can maybe see what we're doing like that and uh i guess we'll dig into them find some corrosion in here no doubt I do have new parts, uh, points, condenser, cap rotor, you know, all the good stuff. But we'll see what we can get it to run on and then see what it needs. Uh, oh yeah, all kinds of corrosion. That's quite dirty. So. I guess before we even check, I might as well just clean these up right now. Get you down in there. See how? See all that white right there? Oh, we'll get them all cleaned up and uh, I'll bet we can make it run just with that. Just cleaning that up. So let me get some sandpaper in there and, and scuff it up and uh, see what we got then. Okay, so I spent a minute cleaning these. I have the key on now. Let's see if we got anything. I flick that. No. Oh, there we go. Maybe a little bit of spark there going on. Oh, it looks like it's jumping off the screwdriver. A little spark happening. That's jumping off the screwdriver. I think that means I need a little more cleaning. All right, let's uh, clean that just a little bit more, then we'll put it back together and see what we got. All right, so we seem to have some spark. Let's see if we can uh, get some gas in this thing. Uh, that should be hopefully enough to make some noise. Let's see what it does. Come on now. Must be the starter. <laughs> Left fingers, huh? alive if she's gonna pull some fuel starter to its list of parts it needs. Huh. 
Okay. We got a gas leak, so I gotta borrow you. See a little bit of fuel in the fuel filter. Might actually, might actually do something. Do all right. Let's see if that cures my fuel leak. And let's see if this starter's got a couple more turns in her. on it did have a generator and oil and a temperature light so I'd say uh, it's doing what it's supposed to hopefully the smoke is just because it's sat forever and ever without running we'll see if it comes out of it it uh it really just smells rich, it doesn't smell like oil. But look at this. 14 point if I get in that better. Can you see that? 14.7, so I got a charging system. Oh, the idle's coming up a bit. All right. So apparently the starter requires a beating after every try. The other thing that's got it's got going on, bring you around. I guess I could shut this off now. It'll pull fuel into the filter but then it immediately runs back um, as soon as this thing is not running. So the pump must be weak. It's just bleeding back off. Uh, also the carburetor likes to be full choke, always. So I can't keep it running. I can't run from the gas pedal to the car to get that off quick enough. Um, so, I guess first thing we're going to have to do is change that fuel pump. I'll do that because I have one. I don't have a starter. So, we'll pull that off and see if maybe I can clean it up and free it up to get it to work. Uh, then we'll worry about the choke after that. So, let's mess with these things. Alright, so, went inside. I went on O'Reilly's website. And a starter for this car is like 54 bucks. So, and it'll be here tomorrow. Uh, so I went ahead and ordered that. So instead of tearing that apart, I grabbed the broken starter kit and uh, that'll get us through with the rest of the stuff. But I am still gonna change that fuel pump out because I have a feeling that 
it's weak it's bleeding back through and uh while i'm right here on this side i might as well throw some plugs and wires cap rotor all that happy stuff on since i've got them so uh we'll get this all buttoned up maybe we'll even give it an oil change now i'm going to finish dealing with that because i'm probably going to end up putting some more gas in the oil uh so I'll, I'll get the i'll get the carburetor sorted out a little bit then we'll do an oil change the oil is pretty clean in it so i think that'll be all right so let's get started in this stuff over here okay so old fuel pump is out i don't know if you can hear this or not but when i blow back through the outlet can you hear that oh you can see the gas coming out of it gas will go back through it on the new one when you blow in it nothing happens at all so the old pump even though it was pumping um, was bad it was it was bleeding the gas back off so we'll get this thing in there and uh, hopefully that'll take care of one of our problems and then we'll move on see what happens next I almost need fender covers on this thing I'm getting grease on it it's actually a nice car <laughs> I don't know what to do. Um, this car needs a name. We gotta have a name for this thing. I'm thinking uh, it's another Nova. This one's a 67. I got the Green Disease, which is a 73. Green Disease is kind of the party Nova. I'm thinking I'm gonna start calling this one Business Casual. So we got Business Casual Nova and we got Party Nova. I don't know. Unless, uh, unless somebody comes up with something better, this is gonna be Business Casual. So let me get the pump on business casual and uh, see if we can make it run again. Okay, so I've apparently beat it to death. <sighs> well, I guess I could still do a tune-up and drop the gas tank while I'm waiting for the starter to show up tomorrow. So we'll keep just changing parts, you know. That way tomorrow it'll be perfect. Yeah, sure. Okay, let me throw a whole bunch of parts into it. Okay, so the tune-up is complete. Oops. I guess I'm gonna get that starter off because it's dead. Might as well be ready for it tomorrow. I am gonna order a carburetor rebuilt kit. This one's leaking. It's not staying running. Um, I should have thought of that, I guess, originally anyways. But uh, I'm gonna get one of them on their way, on its way. I can probably clean this a little bit and, and make it usable so we can see what else is wrong with it i do have a little bit of a fuel leak going on on the top of this i tighten that up and hopefully that takes care of it but i think for now until i get the starter tomorrow nothing else is really worth doing under the hood so we're going to come back here we're going to get this gas tank out and we'll get the uh we'll get this all prepped paint it up and uh, ready to throw the new tank in hopefully tomorrow now the brakes originally went straight to the floor and I was playing with them a little bit ago and um, I actually have pedal now so I might have brakes obviously I'm gonna want to tear them apart and make sure they're correct but I can probably get it off the trailer if I get this thing to run again so that'll be nice so tomorrow i guess this thing will move for the first time on its own in 27 years all right i don't know if i have any chance at all of getting this off but we'll see yeah. oh hey they're not tight at all can't see what i'm doing but i did not order gas tank straps i just ordered a gas tank Hopefully that wasn't a mistake. Huh. Might be easier just to cut through it. Because this is a terrible angle. Yeah. Big one? Will big one be better? Huh. 
I suppose uh, that might be the better way. Of course, I didn't bring one of them with me, so I'll have to go get some to cut that. I'll be right back. Sending unit up front, see if I can get to that. Well, you can come too. Yeah. Well, you can see something there. Well, that's fun. All right, you. I think you're gonna get the same treatment. You see what I'm doing? Uh oh, you come off. It's got a screw, but it's on the top. And it's too short. And it's not a screw on that side. <laughs> that was nice of him. What do we got here? I guess we're gonna just snap that and uh, I'll come up with a new one on the tank. <laughs> yeah, that would have lasted a while. All right, so. Maybe it's empty, I don't know. Let's see if uh, see if the bolts on the other side will come off, and if I can get this thing out of here. I guess it's okay. Yeah. Oh wow. Lovely. Man, look at that floor. Oof. Look at that floor. Impressive. So I'm just gonna take a wire wheel and scuff it up a little bit and uh, make it black. This is, this is quite nice. How about that? All right, well, let me get this all prettied up and uh, ready for the tank to go back in. I'm impressed. Okay, so day two with the business casual Nova. Uh, in truth, it's like lunchtime now. I've been working on it off camera. The reason I hadn't had the camera with me is because yesterday I noticed that I had 87 video clips on the card in the camera and uh that's pushing my luck um reason that you've never seen a video on the, the van the econoline is because i lost like 90 percent of it by being stupid with my uh, video clips so this morning i made sure that all 87 of them were on my computer also on my hard drive so hopefully i won't lose any but in the meantime, while that was all downloading, um, I did bring you back here. Okay, so this morning while we were downloading video clips, I did take the uh, chassis paint and I, I got this all coated. Pretty good stuff actually, that Summit uh, chassis shield. And I went up as far as, I don't know, I guess where the back seat would be. Uh, at some point the whole car will get done, but that's, uh, that's all I really needed for now. I really just want 
everything good under the gas tank but now i gotta let this dry a little bit so while we're doing that we can assemble the gas tank i can fight with this uh, get that on get it ready to go under there okay so this is probably one of the toughest jobs to do alone um, one of the toughest simple jobs to do alone so here's how i've kind of figured out how to do it get the uh the sending unit centered good on that big gigantic rubber o-ring get the locking ring somewhere near where you need to be a socket and an extension we're going to try to squeeze that o-ring down like this Let's see if i can get this to line up somewhere where i need it to uh, you need it leaning forward to start with i don't know if you can see that because as you ratchet this it's going to pull it back that way Let's see if I can get some strain. Nope, I'm sorry. I'm thinking backwards. I guess I should have tried this today. Oh, get over there. Get over there. Get that O-ring squished a little bit. And then you might be able to get the locking ring started on all three tabs. Maybe. Might have to take a little bit more with the uh, the ratchet strap. You're on. You're on. You are not yet. Let me go a little bit more. Really way easier as a two-person job but sometimes you don't have that luxury all right there we got it started So I guess we'll uh, throw it under the car. Good deal. I thought this was an interesting thing with the Chevy 2. And I think only the Chevy 2, but I, I could be wrong on that. This massive shroud over the flywheel or the uh, flex plate and torque converter is actually an air exchange because this power glide transmission is quote unquote air cooled it does not have any cooling lines running up to the radiator to cool it it just circulates air through this contraption here and there's some holes up in the top of the bell housing that let the air circulate through that's how this transmission is cooled something i've got to keep in mind because stop and go city traffic might be a little tough on this uh 50 whatever 56 year old unit and also if i ever put anything for a different motor in this that's not going to probably hold up uh so anyways i thought it was kind of neat uh i have seen them before but this will be the first one that i've ever really run that's an air-cooled power glide transmission i almost forgot to take the rest of this off that would have stunk Oh, I should have drug some tools over here, too, now that I got myself underneath the car. Yeah, I'll see if I can get it off without anything.
really want to bend this pipe. Gotta finagle this a little bit. Oh, I might have to get back under there. Well, that was easy. Okay, I see, a, see my next problem. And that is this pipe gets big right here. So I'm going to have to cut that one that I have down a little bit so it fits over that. I'm also going to clean that up with sandpaper, I guess, a little bit. All right, so gas tank time. I got that clean. Oh, here, I can show it to you. I've got that cleaned up as best as I can. Um, I think that's going to be our struggle. An empty gas tank shouldn't go in too bad. Let me put you where you can watch me. And uh, whoop. we'll see how it goes. another pair of clothes on my trailer oh look at that you're actually gonna be easy One started. Wow. Well, that wasn't a challenge at all. All right, and that is where it belongs. That's nice. This looks relatively straight. So, nice job. Guess I'll just tighten her down. I usually only use impacts to break things free. I don't like to tighten them with an impact. Although sometimes it's beneficial. But hey, you get to watch me crank this up for a while. Didn't get too much paint on me, that's nice also. And we'll get that over where it belongs, hopefully. Right well, there. that so we got one 516 line on the front 
the ground and the sending unit wire and we got a tank in her very good okay o'reilly's finally got back to me it is 10 after 5 <laughs> sunday but it's better than nothing and hopefully if everything goes well i can still get the starter fluids and battery and stuff into the car and um have it get itself off the trailer under its own power i don't think i have headlights yet uh i'm hoping it's just because of the dimmer switch but um i don't know Hope, hopefully it's not too late when i'm done because i would like to take it for a victory lap but um there's our destination We're gonna pull in and get what we need Okay, bolted the starter in. I just went ahead and put the shim on it. Uh, gonna assume that it needs it. If it doesn't, then I'll take it off. Purple wire on a Chevy is your start. It goes under the stud closest to the motor. Or closest to the engine. The other two. These are a nine millimeter also, which is kind of weird. The, uh, the old starter, they were five sixteenths. These are not five sixteenths. And I've been probably blocking the camera shot with my shoulder this whole time. It's tough not having a cameraman. Uh, see if I can get you in there a little bit. size are you now all right you are nine sixteenths Again, tight but not broken. Now, the original starter had a bracket back here that bolted to it. The new starter does not, and I hope that's not a problem. Um, well, I guess we'll find out if it's a problem or not. I, I guess, uh, I mean, I could take that apart, drill it, tap it. I'm sure it's not really anything difficult, but if I can get away without it, then. I'm gonna to try to for now. So I gotta do something to secure my fuel line, but again, for now, it'll be all right. I won't rattle through it too quickly. Uh, so the next issue, next issue is gonna be my crooked. There we go. Where are you pointed? Okay, so the next issue was I was getting a little bit of leakage off of my fuel pump. Uh, right there so I bought a new piece of hard line I'm just gonna cut it and run a little short section of it and uh, hopefully that'll solve that problem right there so let me go find it cut it and uh, I don't know see what I can do okay hopefully that doesn't leak anymore 
drop this down. Uh, I guess the next thing we got to do is change this internal filter right, right in here. Let's see if I can set you somewhere once again. There we're not in each other's way. Alright, so this should have... The one they gave me is kind of goofy looking. It's almost like the old stone filter. We'll see what's actually in here. Oh, that's what's in here, but it looks looks really nice. There's a spring in here. There. And, uh, man, that looks brand new, though. I don't think that's a problem. I'll change it. I don't think I need to, but I'll change it. Alright, so paper element goes in there. Filter. Spring. Let's see if I can get that together without shooting that spring into orbit. All right, slide that up a little bit. Those are pretty good leakers too. Now let's see if I can get this angled right. Oh, look at that! And hopefully, that nut is in bad shape. Hopefully, I won't have any leaks, and I'll have a running vehicle. All right. Let me... Oh, i got to get some coolant in this. Let me get some coolant in this and uh, hook the battery back up and see what happens. All right. Yep. Um, O'Reilly's brand 50-50 and we're gonna have to just keep feeding it antifreeze but hopefully we can get her to run I gotta find my little bottle because I'm gonna have to bottle feed it until it pulls fuel from the gas tank oh I probably ought to put some fuel in the gas tank also huh It's like my belly after tacos. Sounds like it's just pouring all over the place. But... <laughs> Alright, so you don't need to watch me put gas in it. Let me fill the gas up, throw the battery in it, and then I'll bring you back when it's time to make some. Alright, well, I only put five gallons of gas in it because that Obama can was taking forever. That should be good enough to get her off the trailer. Uh, well, let's see what it does. Oh, I don't have the keys. And I gotta find the keys. Okay, so let's see what this thing does.
Okay, a couple days later, uh, back to the car after, you know, the three days of rain that Pennsylvania has been giving us every three days. Um, it's cold this morning. It's supposed to get into the 50s. It's like, I don't know, 32 right now, but it's going to warm up. The sun feels hot, so we're going to try to get some brakes on this thing. You saw me get it off the trailer. Um, and if you look real careful at that video of it coming off the trailer, you can see the driver's front tire is like sliding along. That was my one brake. Uh, then it gave up too and uh, came flying off the trailer Put it into neutral and it actually came to a stop pretty quick. So I'm thinking I might have one stuck wheel and three non-working wheels um, We'll look for a, a bad rubber brake hose. So if at all possible, I'm gonna try to keep this master cylinder Because it has a bail on it. It looks really really clean on the inside. I think it's a relatively new part and when I was checking it once I put fluid in it the front reservoir that spurts pretty good the bottom is like all churned up and low so like i said I, i'm thinking i'm gonna have a blown wheel cylinder on one of the back wheels uh, and maybe a stuck brake line on one of the front wheels like maybe this one um so i'm actually gonna do this last which might be dumb but we'll we'll see i can probably get some help bleeding it now as far as the carburetor oh look this linkage keeps popping off and getting jammed See the gas leaking out of this thing. I've done a little research since uh, since I talked to the camera last time. And these Rochester one barrels are notorious for warping between the body and the top here. And when they do that, they're gonna suck gas into the power vent. If I if what the guy said on the forum is right. And so they just they never run right, they they'll never idle right. At a cruising speed they're always fluctuating um, trying to dial this thing in I actually right now have the mixture screw all the way in and it's still running rich so I'm it's got to be pulling gas into into something I'm not sure I did buy a rebuild kit I might try to double up this gasket and see if that does anything but I also have ordered a, a second carburetor I guess the best cure is to throw a carter on it um, but I was looking at them and the linkage is a little different and I, don't, I really don't feel like messing with that now I just want to get this thing on the road where it belongs The other thing that I noticed when running it for any time is the valve cover gasket leaks like crazy So I've got a valve cover gasket uh, a new uh, PCV valve all that stuff so we'll uh, we'll get this all cleaned up and I still don't have a blower working so I, I gotta play with that see how come I don't have a fan oh and that looks like it's gonna be difficult to change I thought maybe it just bolted on the outside all right well we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll deal with that when we feel like it I guess now I kind of really need a blower well I'll, I'll troubleshoot that I do have another motor uh, so worst case scenario I guess we, we dig into that um, so at any rate we're gonna get into the brakes I guess we'll start in the rear I got to uh, grab a few more tools get this thing up in the air get some jack stands under it pull some tires and see what we got going on in there okay old part is off except what I'm working on down the old part is a blowed out AC Delco where they proudly listed it as made in the USA the new part 
is also an AC Delco. It is physically lighter. Like I can feel that this is a lighter part. Not made in the USA. Um, but it looks the same. So that's what's going on. I am working on cleaning these pins up so that they don't eat the rubber boot right away and, and start causing problems. So I'm going to get as much of this stuff cleaned up as I can and then we'll reassemble this and uh, move on to the other side. Okay, so new wheel cylinder, uh, probably half a can of brake cleaner. It looks pretty good. Turns all right. I uh, took some sandpaper to the drum, cleaned it up, sprayed it. I think this will be all right. Um, throw this together. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I guess uh, if there's anything weird over there, I'll bring you in. If not, it's going to go together just like this. Um, looking at the spring, I mean, they still have paint on them. I'd say this thing was done not long before it was parked. So, you know, hopefully... Uh, hopefully I can get away with doing something this minimal, but we'll see. We'll, uh, we'll throw this on, check the other side, see how it looks. All right, last break is together. That was actually a couple days ago. It got late on me. Wouldn't bleed up. So, new master cylinder, and it still won't bleed up. Um, I don't see any leaks anywhere. So I'm wondering, the, the back line was blown across the axle and the rear reservoir was empty originally. I'm wondering if the proportioning valve maybe has shifted back to seal the rear up. I, I don't know if that would keep it from bleeding. It would keep from getting no pressure. I'm, I'm talking and thinking at the same time, so <laughs> I, I really am this dumb. <laughs> What I think I'm going to do though, which would eliminate both problems, if it's a leak back there or if it's a proportioning valve, is I'm going to just plug this line off of the proportioning valve, go into the back. Simplest way to do that, you see people pound it in flat, get yourself just a finish nail, cut it short, and just stick that in there and tighten the fitting back up. That'll seal off that rear line. Then I'll see if I have pedal, and that will, it won't tell me which one it is, but um... If it's a proportioning valve, that's going to be a dead solid uh, seal. It's not going to move wheel cylinders. So I might be able just by stomping on it to work that back where it belongs. I did buy a new one, uh, but it has two separate lines for the front. Whereas this one is one line and then it splits um, at its first point down here. See if I can get in there. Right, right here. Brake line comes down, goes into that. This goes to the driver's wheel and then a smaller line goes out to the other side uh, so the big question will be if I can get that to break free it's 9 16 oh look at that all right good deal all right let me get this off get a nail in there and see if uh, see if it does anything okay back together um, I guess in all honesty, that wasn't anywhere near big enough. I had to come up with a, like a brass brad, but same idea. I put a, uh, a nail into the brake line, tightened it back up onto it. Now, let's see if we have some pedal. Oh, I think we have brakes. We definitely have brakes now. Alright, I still got some air in the front lines maybe, but I have a pedal. Let's see if I'm getting fluid anywhere. Uh, I leaked some out, but I think I might have brakes now. I might have front brakes now. So it's possible at least that I have front brakes. Uh so I'm gonna replace the line to the back, but front brakes are good enough, you know? I'm gonna finish greasing the front end. I know that I need an idler pulley. I'm sorry, I need an idler arm, but that's no big deal. I mean, it's not gonna, it's not gonna break on me because that's loose. All the other uh, parts are tight. My tie rods and center link and everything. Everything else is good in the front end. So let me get these grease. We'll throw some wheels on this thing and uh, 
we're gonna actually drive it a little bit on its own so one other item I can take care of uh, before I take my first test drive my Chinese carburetor showed up so did my rebuild kit for this but since they're both here we're gonna throw the Chinese carburetor on and uh, see how it does I'll rebuild this and see if it's better uh, I think we'll just keep that gasket right on there it looks pretty good this is an amazingly I don't know this is like a perfect replica I mean this is this is the greatest knockoff ever as far as <laughs> as far as matching perfectly uh, it, it looks identical to the to the factory carburetor uh, so hopefully it works better than the factory carburetor let me get these lines all hooked up get some gas into it and we'll uh, see if it will stay idling if I can make it run okay I'm gonna drive it down to the uh, to the gas station they have a car wash there as well so we will fill it up and scrub it up and see what it actually looks like see if it goes that far so uh, let me finish this thing up and we'll see what it sounds like oh I found the air cleaner in the trunk also I might have told you that I don't remember so we'll be able to throw the air cleaner on it as well so uh, we get this thing all done we'll dial it in and see what we can do with it okay I threw about five gallons of gas in it because it didn't have any gas in it um, I threw a bottle of sea foam in it and I found this in the trunk uh, it's a metal can I don't know how old it is but you can see a lot of it is actually just laying in the trunk that I'll have to deal with. But I'm going to put the remainder of this in here. Because I probably should have it. What color should this be? Oh, that looks alright. A little bit of lead substitute or whatever it might be in the lead substitute bottle. <laughs> Hopefully it's not boiled linseed oil and I just killed my motor. Um, if anybody wants this... Be the first guy to ask nicely and uh, email me an address and I'll, I'll send that out to you. So let's, uh, let's get this thing fired up, warmed up, adjust the carburetor a little bit, throw some wheels on it, see if I can get it to the gas station. Okay, tools are in the trunk, fire extinguishers on the floor. Oh, oh, oh. Starts like it's made to. I don't like that generator light being on, but doesn't really seem like it's got a problem. Uh. So, let's uh, put her into gear. Got brakes. Got brakes. Uh, good enough for two miles. They're holding all right. It's just kind of a little mushy. So let's uh, scoot this thing down the road. It'll make it to the gas station. Uh, still need to be bled, I'd say. Well, it's got both gears. That's that's nice. a little bit it might be the uh, 40 year old tires it might be the idler arm I'm not really sure uh, I do not have a speedometer needle I do have a working gas gauge oh you didn't have to die on me so I have no idea how fast we're going oh you're pointed into hey get back here it uh it smells a little rich still going down the road again I have no idea how fast we're going I, it actually it appears that the needle is pegged all the way beyond 120 so I might have to mess with that
So the real test, the car wash. Go. Oh, I don't know if the wipers work. Uh. All right, here we go, guys. See how wet we get. It's got a little bit of a mist to it. And it's idling a little bit high, but we'll see what happens. All right, so back home, it did its job. Uh, it sounds like I need some vacuum lines. It's running a bit high. I uh, got a little bit of a miss. We're gonna clean that up in another video. We are going to replace the rear brake line. So we have four brakes. We're gonna put an exhaust on it, but we got ourselves a car, guys. All right, guys, I'm gonna call that a video. Thanks for watching. Come back. We'll do some more on this. We'll do some more on the green disease real soon. Um, I've got a 300 inline six for the Econoline van. We'll be uh, swapping the Econoline only pieces over to it and getting that thing up and running soon. Uh, stick around. We got a whole bunch of stuff to go. Green disease up next. Till next time. See ya.